Um, kind of going back, circling back to the disuse atrophy, you know, that's something that's obviously very relevant for people in if they're injured or perhaps they're traveling somewhere and they don't have the same, they're not, they're working their muscles out the same way that they usually do. And so there's a there's a, a there's a case to, to be made, you know, where it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to be engaging my muscles as much. And you're kind of like, you don't use it, you lose it, right? Um, and this is where a supplement that I'm, I'm, I'm quite fond of for a variety of reasons, um, omega-3 fatty acids seem to be beneficial. So Dr. Chris McGlory came on the podcast and talked about some of his research using high-dose omega-3s. So it was about five grams a day, which is um, a little bit higher than what is prescribed for some people for different cardio metabolic reasons, was able to prevent or cut disuse atrophy almost by 50%. In, in this case, it was in, in women. So omega-3 fatty acids might be another um, sort of tool for recovery, right? Um, use, use during perhaps illness, injury. I think they should be used every day. There's a lot of benefits, cardio, cardiovascular benefits as well, anti-inflammatory benefits. Again, going down to the recovery and omega-3 fatty acids being beneficial for inflammation. For, ha- for so- someone like yourself, it might, might be even more useful, right? Where you're really running, you're running what, 20, 20 hours a week almost. There's a lot of stress uh, on your muscles and a lot of inflama- inflammatory cytokines and molecules that are generated d- during uh, that kind of training. And, and you know. the heart too, I think I mean, it was maybe something that you had posted, but I think there was a study showing omega-3 fatty acids could prevent some of the um, cardiac injury biomarkers after endurance running or after downhill running. So yeah, I look at some of those studies and I mean, I do take omega-3 myself. I think I take a uh, two grams per day. So maybe I need to up my dose to three to five grams per day based on some of this uh, research here. But yeah, I, like cardiac stuff too, you know, I think um, makes sense to take that for recovery purposes for sure. Yeah, I think it was uh, three grams a day and you know, it decreased the troponin levels that that are, which is a marker of mm-hmm. you know, cardiac stress. I, I kind of want to move lastly to the the last sort of aspect in our in the training guide and that has to do with creatine supplementation. And Dr. Stuart Phillips and also Dr. Lane Norton both mentioned creatine as one of their top-tier supplements that they take. Uh, lots and lots of evidence on safety and efficacy. Um, I take it. You take it. Maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, just summarize briefly for people what are some of the benefits of creatine supplementation, how people should start, dose, you know, some of the best practices. I think creatine, I feel like it's probably like one of the most popular supplements these days and everybody is taking it or if they're not they probably should be due to the the evidence that's coming out so yeah creatine um it you know it's something that we get from the diet but that you can supplement with it to get more regarding you know how much you should take i think that currently the recommendations and you know based on what um dr Stu phillips and lay norton and others said taking five to ten grams per day appears to be the optimal dose. If you're a bit larger, you could maybe, you know, take 10 to 15, but even five grams per day after a while will probably saturate your muscle creatine stores, especially if you're consuming a lot of meat, which does contain creatine too. So you're getting some from your diet and supplementing. So in regards to how to dose, uh, there was once a thought that you had to do this loading dose when you started supplementing. So you take 20 grams per day for a week, and then you go down to a maintenance dose of five to 10 grams per day indefinitely. Um, that re- the loading dose isn't necessarily recommended anymore. Um, it's pretty much just start taking five to 10 grams per day tomorrow and never stop it. Um, so the loading dose doesn't appear to be optimal unless for some reason you need to get your muscle creatine stores up you know, in the next few days, then you need to take a loading dose. But for most people, that doesn't appear to be important. So it's pretty easy supplement to take. It doesn't matter what time of day you take it because it doesn't have the acute benefits. So just find a time during the day when it works and makes sense to take it, take five to 10 grams and just continue to take it. It seems to have benefits for muscle performance and building strength. Obviously, that's kind of where the main benefits are probably most evident, and it was thought of as being like this bodybuilding strength supplement, which it obviously is. So it uh, allows you to train harder, which then allows you to build more strength and muscle mass. But I think there's a lot of evidence coming out that it might be good for older adults to take for muscle strength as well. For endurance athletes, it probably makes sense for them to take it. Um, And then there's a lot of stuff coming out about creatine in the brain for, you know, during sleep deprivation. Um, So just a lot of evidence that it's good to take. There appear to be very few side effects. It's very safe. 
and all of the myths. I think Stu was talking about some of the myths uh, regarding hair loss or kidney health. And Lane even said uh, mentioned some of those. And none of those really appear to be valid. Um, creatine is well studied. And so um, it's something that most people can can benefit from. And it's, again, pretty, pretty simple to take. It's just buy creatine monohydrate, take 5 to 10 grams per day, and um, just continue to take it after about a month or so. That's kind of when the benefits might start to appear because that's when your muscle stores are are saturated. I take about five grams a day. Yeah, as do I. I take I take five grams per day. I've been experimenting with taking ten grams per day on the weekend for no reason. I I run longer on those days, so I just I'm like, oh, maybe for recovery purposes, just take ten grams. It's just something I'm trying. But yeah, usually I'm five grams per day. I thought about experimenting with ten grams. I mean, see, just is there? I mean, it's hard to sometimes notice differences, subtle differences like that, especially when you're taking so many other things and doing so many other things right but um i've i've also thought about kind of increasing the dose just to see like oh can i lift a little bit heavier is it is it gonna affect affect my uh, strength as well yeah it might be worth uh it might be worth trying out i think one more thing about creatine um to note is that like i think people are concerned Stu phillips mentioned he doesn't take it all the time and that if he goes on vacation he might just like not take it because it's not important it does appear that after you stop taking it your stores will still stay saturated for about like one to two weeks so like if you go on vacation or and forget your creatine then just like eat more steak maybe on vacation and supplement when you come back <laughs> yeah that's good to know yeah i've definitely uh not taking it on uh vacations before especially because my my container is like this big of it it's like <laughs> tsa also might think it's like they might be get a little bit skeptical due to how it looks i, I know i know i often wonder that sometimes when i'm aliquoting like powders and stuff i'm like oh my, is this gonna get my bag flat 